The title of this piece is a bit of a misnomer. There is no product for me to play here, no finished work for me to review. Raven Blade is one of those works that was lost to the sands of time. A game that was announced many, many years ago before being quietly shepherded away and left to be forgotten in the darkest corners of the internet when it failed to come together in a way that Nintendo found satisfactory. That, however, has not prevented it from being a subject of absolute fascination to me, and I'm going to take a moment to indulge that enchantment and tell you a tale of Raven Blade. A story that, unfortunately, doesn't end very well. To talk about Ravenblade, we must first discuss a man named Jeff Spangenberg, a developer at Iguana Entertainment and Acclaim who found early success with games like Turok, Dinosaur Hunter. He worked his way up the ladder at Acclaim until he became one of the company's top executives, a position he used to cultivate a powerful relationship with Nintendo. During the time Spangenberg spent at Acclaim, the company was on Nintendo's dream team of independent but exclusive second-party developers. But Spangenberg wanted even more. This ambition would catch up to him, however, as he was fired from his position at Acclaim when rumors surfaced that he was going to abandon ship and start his own company the second his contract expired. Not one to be dissuaded, and now free from Acclaim, Spangenberg went ahead and started that company a small developer based in Austin, Texas, named Retro Studios. Using Spangenberg's connections at Nintendo, Retro pitched the company several mature-themed titles for their upcoming GameCube system. Nintendo, perhaps wishing to bolster their upcoming console's rather family-friendly library, liked the pitch, and the company agreed to fund and publish four retro titles. An American football game titled NFL Retro Football, an action racer called Car Combat, an untitled science fiction piece simply codenamed Action Adventure, and a fantasy RPG called Rune Blade. In the end, most of these titles were rather unremarkable and were either heavily changed mid-development or cancelled outright. Development for both NFL Retro Football and Car Combat was quietly shuttered, while the untitled action adventure evolved into what would become Metroid Prime. But what I really want to talk about right now is Runeblade, or rather Ravenblade, as it would soon be retitled. For a while, Ravenblade was the only pitch from Retro that remained relatively intact. Originally conceived as a traditional RPG with turn-based combat by project lead Steve Barcia, the game officially began development in 1999. Shortly afterward, the team slightly shifted focus and retooled the title as an action RPG with a fully implemented real-time combat system. The story of the game was a self-described epic quest set in a fantastical world filled with dragons, animal-like races, and demonic beasts. The player, a knight who can master various weapons and wield magical powers, would explore everything from cryptic ruins to mysterious caves to magical cities floating in the sky, all while solving the mystery of the titular Ravenblade. Things were going well for a while, as Retro developed Metroid Prime and Ravenblade concurrently. But a few months in, development hit some troubled waters. Solid, constant progress was being made by the Prime team, but those working on Ravenblade were plagued by problem after problem. Most of them stemmed from the combat system, which, as you can imagine, is an enormous problem when it's the backbone of your game. Progress in its repair was slow, and it was made even more sluggish by Nintendo's preference in the Prime project. They moved several members of the Ravenblade team over to Primes, which only compounded the problems and slowed development even further. It eventually got to the point where Nintendo set a hard deadline for the Ravenblade team. If significant progress was not made on the project before late July of 2001, they would have to cancel it. Now, sadly enough, that progress was not made, and Retro and Nintendo announced that they'd cease development of Ravenblade in the summer of 2001. If we're being honest, that was probably the best decision to make in this situation. Especially for a new studio, having a solid and unwavering focus on only one thing, especially if said thing is a license as revered as Metroid, is almost always going to end up with a better product. And if the hearsay from Retro employees is to be believed, Raven Blade was an absolute mess of a game. In an interview with IGN, current president and CEO Michael Kelbaugh said that, I just couldn't believe that we even came close to making anything like that because it was absolutely horrible. But Kelball also touched on why I think this game has such an interesting story. 
the internet will not let it die. Every time E3 rolls around and it looks as though Retro is going to announce their next title, someone in a nothing blog post or a random forum or a comment section somewhere will wonder if they're bringing back Ravenblade. There's this odd, underground movement of speculators who wonder what might have been if history took a slightly different turn, and I won't lie, I'm one of them. This project ticked all the right boxes for me when I discovered its existence in 2005 or 6. I'm a sucker for Western fantasy. I, I love discovering a world's particular rules, the way it handles magic and beasts and legendary weapons. This game was like a goldmine for that. I felt like an adventurer entering an ancient crypt lost to time. It's a mystery that I suppose I just wanted to solve. Getting a glimpse into this world with its enigmatic trailers and concept art filled with that classic Frank Frazetta, Ralph McQuarrie cheese, and then having it quietly sink away into the liquid darkness of cancellation, it ignited my imagination in a way that I can't really describe. Perhaps I feel like I owe a debt to this game. I know for a fact that I got my start writing by making what I guess you would call fanfiction to fill the gaps left vacant here. Either way, this game reminds me of a time in my life that I hold dear. I care for it, or perhaps the mystery surrounding it, in a way that's almost personal, and in some way, I hope I was able to share a bit of that wonder with you. I guess it goes to show how powerful the ideas of entertainment can be, even the old rusted ones that are put aside for the shiny new ones.